Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi show on a Monday. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm great. That's awesome. I was just talking to a guy over the weekend. He said that every day when we start the program, he talks along with that when I say, hey, baby, how you doing? <laughs> and he says, you always say, I'm great. And I said, she's not always great. <laughs> Sometimes she's just putting on her game face. But today is the 27th, and I've got a super awesome guest today. We're going to be talking about American Heart Month, which we're wrapping up here tomorrow. But Dr. Eileen Sheesh with American Heart Month later in the program. Escape maps and compasses and files were inserted into Monopoly board games and smuggled into POW camps in Germany during World War II. Did you know that? Really? Yeah, they smuggled the stuff in there. They're like, hey, we just want to let them play Monopoly and, you know, help them escape. Sounds like something that would have happened on Hogan's Heroes. Yeah. You never watched that show, did you? I've seen it before, but I didn't watch it like you did. Fantastic. We were a MASH household. I'm sorry. My oh, dad loved MASH, MASH is nothing compared oh, to Hogan's Heroes. Oh, that's fighting words right there. <laughs> hey, gardening is said to be one of the best exercises for maintaining healthy bones. So really? there you go. All that stretching and sitting up and sitting down and planting and all that. Coming up, we've got some special things going on on this Monday. We'll tell you all about those in a bit. Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? Thought you never ask. It's a Monday. It's Monday, February the 27th. Today is Anasomnia Awareness Day. What is Anasomnia? I don't know. A-N-O-S-O-M-I-A. Ansomnia Awareness Day. So apparently huh. it needs a day because I... Because I'm not aware. I don't know what it was. It's also International Polar Bear Day today. So if you see a polar bear today, give him a hug. <laughs> I don't recommend no, that No, probably at not. All. They are a lot more vicious than they look. Yes. They can kill you. So it is also Losar today. L-O-S-A-R. That's it. Doesn't even say Losar Day, just Losar. Okay. So I'm going to have to Google some stuff. I don't know what stuff. that is either. Museum Advocacy Day today. And our neighbors to the north, National Cupcake Day in Canada. Ah. So, hi, Canada. National Cupcake Day. What a sweet day. I like cupcakes. Wouldn't you Wouldn't you share with your favorite I neighbor? I like cake. <laughs> Wait, maybe we're no longer your favorite neighbor. <laughs> we're still kind of your only neighbor. Wouldn't you like to share with John and Heidi? There you go. Let's just do that. Anyway, a lot of special things going on on this Monday, February the 27th. John and Heidi. Hey, it's John from the John and Heidi Show. Join me and my wife, Heidi, at 80s in the Sand, a week-long 80s event this November 11th through the 18th in beautiful Punta Cana. That's in the Dominican Republic. You'll get to meet and listen to 80s bands like Loverboy, Starship, Howard Jones, and many more. Plus, meet 80s icons from the movies like Anthony Michael Hall, Andrew McCarthy, and several others. Get all of the details at 80sinthesand.com. Use promo code RADIO to get a $200 immediate refund per person. That's 80sinthesand.com, promo code RADIO. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. It was anything but a high-speed chase when a Toronto man stole a backhoe. <laughs> then he broke down a wall of a car wash to get to the coin machine. <gasps> oh, and no. And he plucked the coin machine out of the car wash. But that didn't go unnoticed. This happened in the middle of the night. But a snowplow driver <laughs> saw what happened. <laughs> and the chase was on. There was a snowplow driver chasing <laughs> a backhoe. This sounds so funny. And uh, I don't know if you've ever driven a backhoe or seen one go. They don't go very fast. Snowplows go much faster, so they caught up pretty quickly. But that's when the guy said, oh, I'm going to get out of this slow-moving vehicle. Police were called. The crooks uh, abandoned his slow-moving backhoe in an attempt to make a speedier getaway on foot. That didn't work so hot either because, you know, we just mentioned there was a snowplow. Guess why? There was also snow. And it was done snowing, and he was leaving footprints wherever he was running. Oh, they were able to just follow him. So, like, we don't really need And probably a trail of coins. Yeah. (laughs) That just doesn't sound like a good plan. (laughs) And it's funny because nowadays, uh, I don't know if they're everywhere, but I've seen a lot of car washes now take, like, cars. cars. Yeah. Yeah. And there are even, like, some parking meters and stuff that take that. I was thinking of that the other day. I was like, we're going to be at a point where we could be, like, a, a coinless and billless world someday. And pe- that makes me sad. I think people will miss that instead of just having it all on a card. You know, would would you miss having like? How would you make decisions? I would miss... Flip a credit card? I mean, <laughs> it's not going to work. I would miss money, even though I, I hardly too. ever have. We, any. we don't have much, so we don't, we don't get to see much. But I of would it. miss cash. I would. I would too. It's kind of fun. You're gonna make it rain with a debit card? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got one. I'm gonna 
We can throw that at you. <laughs> there you go. Not that I've done that either, but I'm just saying. Anyway, back to this story. Uh, they they finally caught him because they followed the footprints right to him. So there you go. And you know it's true because you heard it on the radio. John and Heidi. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain. And this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. We're going to head to the Waffle House where one uh, lucky waitress is taking care of her fellow employees in maybe not such a good way, acting on a motive still unknown. A waitress was caught on camera pouring methamphetamine into a co-worker's drink. Oh my gosh. Yeah. According to the smoking gun, the drink proved to be entirely too stiff and the employee had to be hospitalized. <gasps> For the first time in the world, a Waffle House employee couldn't handle her liquor. <laughs> okay, maybe not. <laughs> no, that's really, I, I think that's sad. Uh, methamphetamines, that's not, that's, you know, this is a Oh, that's stuff. horrible. I wonder so, if she was mad at her or if she was trying know. to help her out. Uh, she's like, well, you need a little pep in your step. Let's see if we can do this. <laughs> Boom. What happened? Oh, hey, now oh, you need more than a pep boy. in your step. Yeah, that's, uh, kids, this is what happens when your brain is on drugs. Now your moment of duh. New Zealand's Mark Leslie Payne is on his way to court to defend himself on charges of driving with a suspended license. Guess what? He was driving with a suspended license. I kind of figured that from the intro. Mark, yeah, he was driving there. He was late for his hearing because he got pulled over for speeding and driving with a suspended license, (laughs) knowing that he was going to be in trouble again. But was he driving with a suspended license? He was driving, yes, with a suspended (laughs) license. But he thought he had a super-duper plan when the police officer got to the window. Mark was in the passenger seat. He said, "Um, I wasn't driving. And that's when the officer said, you're the only one in the car. (laughs) 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 Then who was driving? Officer, you can't give me a ticket. I'm in the passenger seat, so it wasn't me. (laughs) What are you talking about? Brilliant plan. Yeah. Well, not such a great plan. I just saw a picture online of a guy who got pulled over in the uh, the lane where you have to have a right. passenger. Right. And he had a mannequin. Yeah. I've, I've and it was a pretty lifelike mannequin. And she looked kind of frightened. So, <laughs> <laughs> Kind of frightened. She did. It's like, I'd be afraid too, riding with a maniac that'll strap a mannequin in his passenger seat. All right. We have your scoop of the day on the way. The Scoop of the Day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Now your Scoop of the Day. This makes no sense whatsoever, but Men's Health has a little thing talking about Cornell University study where they found that dieters that were shown a negative message about junk food, like saying that junk food is evil, ate 39% more junk food than people who are given a positive message like junk food tastes good. <laughs> so if we think it's evil, we eat more of it? What the what? It's one of those things. If you tell me I can't, then I'm like, going oh, yeah? to. Well, you watch. Just wait and see. I don't know. That's a bad plan. Just telling you. United Airlines has hired an executive whose job position is listed as storyteller. I want that job. I love to tell stories. Tell stories to who? I don't know. Apparently, passengers that are waiting that at are the gate. Stuck at their, <laughs> they should their flights are stuck. Everybody's sitting there in the terminal. Once upon a time, <laughs> United Airlines had an airplane that was late, and that is right now. Hey, a New Zealand firefighter was injured in the line of duty while trying to rescue a cat from a tree. The cat and the firefighter both fell from the tree. The firefighter was flown to a hospital. Oh, no that's report too on what bad. happened to the cat. I hope he didn't land I'm on I'm sure the, the cat. cat's fine. Yeah, he landed on his feet, most likely. Cat cats probably are, didn't even need help getting out of the tree. Cats are kind of wily like that. Like, they, uh, they flip around really good and land on their feet. I don't know how that works, but they do it. An officer at a small city of Haines City, Florida, ran a red light on his way to lunch, uh, making a left turn, and the light turned red. After seeing a video evidence of his crimes, he turned himself into his boss and wrote himself a ticket. He wanted to to let people know most cops are honest and do the right thing. We actually had a story about a cop that got a ticket for 
for uh, speeding. I'm pretty it, sure it was, it was this story. No, it was the no? different one. Absolutely okay. positive. This just happened. Uh, there was one where an officer was driving and the, the I don't know what you, speed cameras, whatever, caught him. And he saw that it was him and he paid the thing. He's like, oh, you know what? I was speeding. And they said, well, were you on your way to something? No. Nope. No. Just speeding. I apparently was just speeding. Well, now you're also apparently fired. <laughs> no, <laughs> that didn't happen. Recent research from the university over in uh, UK, Harriet Watt University, found that the brain enters a meditative state when going through Harriet green space. Harriet Watt University. What? Harriet Watt University. H-E-R-I-O-T dash W-A-T-T. You don't want to say that too fast. We <laughs> <laughs> found those people in UK found... I don't know if that's a joke. Anyway... They found that uh, your brain enters a meditative state when going through green spaces. The findings don't mean the green spaces trigger spacing out. Rather, the engagement required to walk through a green space is more effortless. So they're saying, have a lot of green space, and we're going to move on. (laughs) Have you ever heard of FOMO? You know what that is? No. Fear of missing out. And it's a real thing for social media users. In fact, a new survey revealed 56% of social media users are afraid of missing out on things. They don't want to miss any important news or status updates when they're away from social media and networks. 56% have a fear of missing out. Do you have that, Heidi? Not at all. Me neither. Uh, 15% of teens report having received a, a an inappropriate photo through their text messaging. 15%. Our daughter has been asked for an yeah. inappropriate photo. And I said, uh, you should take a picture of me holding making a fist and your mother like cleaning her gun and send him that that's about as inappropriate as you're gonna get uh next <laughs> was would that be a threat to a teenager if we did that probably <laughs> then we won't do that and let's pretend like we didn't just say that on the radio <laughs> okay, according to research by the wall street journal the average three-hour baseball game only contains 18 minutes of action <laughs> So the rest of the three I've hours... I've been to baseball games, and I would agree with that completely. The rest of the three hours it's just people like, drinking beer, I think. Wow. I don't know. And finally, as unbelievable as it may seem, researchers at Harvard have come to the conclusion that ketchup could actually lower your risk of getting prostate cancer. Huh. Where are you putting the bottle? I'm not sure what you're... What are you doing with that ketchup? I eat a lot of ketchup. Do you? So I probably... You won't have prostate won't cancer. won't have prostate cancer. <laughs> she, she doesn't have a prostate. <laughs> so we're pretty sure of that. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. Radio advertising works. When it's done right, it works even better. There are many things you can do to get a better response, and shouting sale really isn't the best thing, believe it or not. Did you know that when you put words to music, they're nine times more memorable? If you're trying to get people to remember your company, consider a jingle. We work with one of the very best jingle companies in the business, and we'd love to use music to help you grow your company. Learn more and hear examples at RadioReallyWorks.com. That's RadioReallyWorks.com. John and Heidi. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi show. As we wrap up the month of February, I wanted to make sure we squeeze in this guest before the month is done. February is American Heart Month, and our guest today is Dr. Eileen Sheesh, director of the Women's Heart Failure Clinic at the Cleveland Clinic and chair of the Women Heart Scientific Advisory Council. She's devoted her medical career to treating educating and researching cardiovascular disease in women. And we're going to be chatting with her right now about American Heart Month and all issues that have to do with the heart. So first of all, let's say hello to Dr. Sheesh. How are you doing? Great, and thanks for having me. Now, our heart is a pretty darn important thing, isn't it? Yeah, it is kind of important. We kind of need that, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Every February, people shine the spotlight on Heart Month because this is something that, that is near and dear to so many of us. A lot of people listening probably know somebody that has lost their life because of issues with their heart. So this is something that, you know, we we should take a little extra care and make sure that we're doing the right things for our heart, shouldn't we? Absolutely. Um, You're right. A lot of us do know people who actually have heart disease. Now, what are some symptoms of of heart failure, and who, who would you say is most at risk for that type of thing? Most at risk are people who actually have uh, high blood pressure, uh, diabetics, and people who are at risk for heart attacks. Those are our three common causes. Um, and then the symptoms that people actually will come to my office with 
Our complaints that they've had shortness of breath and a cough for, for usually many weeks, sometimes a month or more. Um, they have been treated often with antibiotics, thinking they had pneumonia, but they didn't get better and they're not contagious and they didn't have a fever. Um, or they actually thought they had asthma and, uh, and took steroids, but it didn't make them better. So that's the most common complaint is shortness of breath. Um, they can get belly pain if the fluid builds up even uh, for a longer period of time, and they think they have a gallstone attack. But the other common finding is that some people will have swelling in their legs, and uh, swelling alone is not um, necessarily heart failure, but swelling with shortness of breath is, uh, is something that needs to be evaluated. And heart failure is not something that's curable, but it is something that you can live with. And it says here that 5.7 million Americans live with heart failure, and about half of that number is women. Yeah, no, I think that that's really uh, very true. Actually, half the, the patients actually are women. But actually, we really are. Um, the disease, I want to provide hope. You know, people actually do better. They really do improve on medical therapy. And in fact, one out of every four actually fully recover, fully recover. So um, on medical therapy, we just have wonderful new drugs out there, and it's just really made a big difference. What are some diseases and conditions and lifestyle factors that would contribute to heart failure? I think they're, they're very basic. You know, I always think of high blood pressure as kind of the, the silent killer because we don't really know that we have high blood pressure uh, unless somebody actually measures our blood pressure. So please go into a pharmacy or anywhere else um, to, to check. Uh, diabetes is also something that is very common uh, that people wouldn't know on their own, so they need to actually have their blood uh, checked. And then the, the third is, uh, you know, many people do have a family history of heart attacks, and uh, those patients should be uh, carefully monitored. So if, if you're diagnosed with this, if you go in and you find out that, hey, I've, I've got issues with this, what do you do next? What is the next step? The very first thing you should do is actually go to a medical provider because we do have wonderful new drugs out there that actually improve your condition. So the very first thing is go, go seek medical attention. The second is actually you need support. Um, and we have wonderful advocacy groups out there, Women's Heart, I'm, I'm lucky to be a part of, and that's a patient advocacy group um, that was formed by women with heart disease. It provides both educational material as well as emotional support through peer groups, one-on-one, as well as virtual, such as telephone and online support. So I think those are the things that you need to do. There are new clinical treatment guidelines for managing heart failure. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. For years, we didn't have new drugs. We have two new FDA-approved drugs, um, and both of them have actually been found to reduce uh, hospitalizations. And that's wonderful. One is a drug that, uh, that lowers heart rate, and the other one actually lowers blood pressure. The combination pill that lowers blood pressure actually also prevents um, death due to heart disease. So that's uh, really important. And, in fact, the trial was so successful and powerful that they, they had to stop early because the drug was uh, so beneficial. But like all drugs, you do need to check with your doctor um, or your medical provider first to make sure that it is uh, safe and right for you. So maybe somebody listening is, is saying, hey, a lot of those things you just talked about are things that kind of concern me because I have some of those. Is there a place that you can go to get some more information to maybe learn a little more about this? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Yeah, womenheart.org. Womenheart.org is, uh, is one uh, wonderful place to, to start learning about heart disease. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us this morning. I know with the, the month of February being American Heart Month, I know that you've got a lot of folks you're going to be chatting with, so thanks for taking some time to, to visit with us. Thanks for having me. So really appreciate it. Again, we're wrapping up February, American Heart Month. Our guest today has been Dr. Eileen Sheesh. If you'd like to know more, there is a website with more details. That website is womenheart.org. Thank you for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Are you looking for senior care for your mom or dad but don't know where to start? No one knows your loved ones better than you do. And no one knows senior living better than A Place for Mom. They've helped thousands of families find the right place for their loved ones. The senior living advisors at A Place for Mom partner with thousands of families every month, listening and offering local knowledge and advice to help find the best senior living communities across the country. Call 1-800-471-5173. That's 1-800-471-5173. 
Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The microwave was invented when a researcher walked by a radar tube and a chocolate bar in his I pocket melted. I knew that. Yeah, we've, we've talked about talked that about before. This. Uh, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The average... Oh, let me see here. Where am I? Uh, right here. Dreamt is the only English world that ends in the letters M-T. Oh. Dreamt. And there's no P in there, but I pronounce it that way. Dreamt. But it's dreamt. Huh. So don't put a P in there. That's, I think, one of the most misspelled words, by the way. Fun fact for you, Heidi. I don't think it is. It is for me. <laughs> Fun fact for you. <laughs> Move on. Say your line. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? <laughs> Act like I'm not a moron right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't even know what I'm doing now. Oh, hey, how about this one here? John Lennon's girlfriend, his first girlfriend's name was Thelma Pickles. Ah. That is just a fun name. He should have had a song about her. Thelma Pickles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Monday. John and Heidi. This is Richard Lustig, the world's first and only seven-time lottery game grand prize winner. Since I endorsed Lottolicious, I have won something every single draw. They do all the work. You don't have to worry about running to the store to buy your tickets. They take care of all that. So if you're looking for the best way to play the lottery, to give yourself the best chance of winning, go to RadioLottoPool.com and join today. Again, that website is RadioLottoPool.com. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi show on a Monday. I've been saving this since last Tuesday. Ah. Because last Tuesday, I found a study that says how to survive Mondays. Well, what a dumb day to put that out. Why would you do it on a Tuesday? Does that make any sense to you? Not at all. Yeah, me neither. So we saved it for a Monday. Yeah. People don't like Mondays. Mondays can be hazardous to your health. But you can take some of the stress out of the day and actually start your work week feeling good with a little help from famed psychologist Dr. Robert Butterworth. Mondays are so stressful they can be life-threatening, he declares. The highest proportion of workplace injuries happen today on Mondays. He says Mondays are also characterized by an increase on-the-job heart attack rate. So 10 tips to get the most from Dr. Butterworth. Not Mrs. Butterworth. This would be your son, Dr. Butterworth. (laughs) Number one, don't stay out late Sunday night. So they're saying a big part of the problem is you've been partying all weekend and now you're going back to work. A lot of this stuff actually happened on the weekend. It's just, you know, materializing today. Next, take a look at how you spend your weekend. If you're exhausted after two days, maybe you should schedule some leisure time on the weekend. Next on the list, get some exercise on the weekend. You know, if you're just sloughing around the house and not doing anything, then you have to get back to work on Monday. That could be a problem, too. Avoid heavy, fatty foods on Sunday night. Man, they're taking all the fun out of everything. Sunday nights is usually when we always do our big meal for the week though yeah we do i know but avoid that no fun you've got all day to cook try to wrap up projects on friday if you can next uh, allow extra time to get ready for monday mornings so don't wake up late and have to rush don't over schedule your mondays give yourself a little more time plan few chores on mondays as possible for monday night so you know don't do the laundry monday night and all that because then you won't have uh, nearly as much stuff on your mind Uh, line up pleasant social activities for monday like, you know, having lunch with a coworker you like or whatnot. And then the last thing says, eat breakfast on Monday morning. I encourage you to do that every morning. But there you go. They say, at least on Monday, make sure you don't miss out on breakfast. It's the most important meal of the day, you know. <laughs> yes, I do. All right. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Only 2 in 10 Americans say they're ready for the unthinkable. Are you ready for a natural disaster? What would happen if you were not able to go out to get food for your family during extreme weather? How long would you be okay without power and without access to get more food? Wise Company has the ultimate emergency preparedness pack with enough emergency food kits for a week or upgrade to be prepared for a month or longer. Call toll-free 888-552-3759. It pays to be prepared. Learn more at radiosavings.com. John and Heidi. Whether you're trying to write the great American novel or just get a cleverly worded email out to your boss, inspiration, when it comes to writing, can fail. If you need a boost of creativity, you're supposed to take a walk or ride a bike or hit the gym. They say a little bit of exercise can help alleviate writer's block and improve creativity. London Telegraph reports of research from the Leiden University in the Netherlands, whose They say those who exercise regularly 
notably outperform the couch potatoes on the tests that were administered. So they're saying if you want to exercise your brain, exercise your body, and then your brain comes along for the ride. So that makes sense. That does make sense. That's good stuff. Those folks are pretty darn smart. Um, I don't know what to say right now. I'm at a loss for words. I should go for a walk. <laughs> and then when I come back, I'll know what to say. How about we do that? Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Christopher Winter, MD, Medical Director of the Martha Jefferson Hospital Sleep Medicine Center, <sighs> says, Schedules are important for your mind and body. A recent study suggests that if you eat meals at the same time every day, your body prepares for them. So this doctor, with that really long name and title, says, be predictable to your body. Have breakfast at breakfast time, lunch at lunch time, dinner at dinner time, you know, and that's going to help. If you have a daily sugar treat at the same time, your body might actually diminish the negative effects of it. Really? Similarly, yeah. Sleep best if you will sleep best, rather, if you keep a consistent schedule for dinner. Dr. Winter suggests setting a timer on your TV to make sure you stay on schedule. Now, I don't know about setting a timer on the TV. I have one on my phone, and it, it pops up at a certain time each night and says bedtime. I have yeah, not you just done it delete once. it and I do. carry on with but what you, you know, were doing. The first thing I did was set it up, and I was like, hey, one of these days I'm going to actually listen to that phone. <laughs> right now it says time for bed. I'm like, eh, I don't think so. I'm watching this show. <laughs> Thanks for the note. <laughs> Coming up, we're going to talk about a world record you do not want. That's on the way. Do you shop online? Do you like to save money? Save money with Honey. Let me explain. Honey is a really smart tool that's free to use. I'm not really an online shopper. I get as many things locally as possible. But there are some things you can only buy online. So when I heard about Honey, I thought, what the heck? It's free. I'll give it a shot. The very first time I used it was for a domain name. It's usually $12.99. Honey searched the internet and found me a discount code. So I bought it from the same exact website for just $0.99. Cents. So I saved 12 bucks. It's absolutely free. So what do you have to lose? Check it out at SaveMoneyWithHoney.com. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi show on a Monday. It is no secret that I've, for whatever reason, become fascinated with world records. I always have been. Yeah, you have. And I'm like, oh, wow, that would be so cool to have a world record. And I was actually looking up world records that I could maybe break, that I could be a world record holder. Not that I really need to be, because I just don't. But it would just be cool. I don't know. Anyway, here's a world record I don't want, and I bet you don't want it either. Heidi, do you want any world records? No, I really don't care. You don't want this one. 29-year-old Matthew McKnight is a world record holder. He finds himself in a weird position of being the person, the world record holder, for something that's really bizarre, the person that has been the greatest distance thrown from a car accident. Oh. Yeah. He managed to survive being thrown, listen to this, 118 feet by a car that hit him. The car was traveling 70 miles per hour. He was struck... Uh, he was trying to help an accident victim on the interstate, and he got hit by a car about 15 miles east of Pittsburgh. The end result was two dislocated shoulders and a broken shoulder, a broken pelvis, a broken leg, and a broken tailbone. Jeepers. He spent two weeks in a hospital and 80 days in rehab before going back to work. Now, this happened a while back. It's in 2002. He still holds the record. So, you know, sad no, news is... No good deed goes unpunished. Yeah. Sad news is, you know, the guy got banged up. He's trying to help somebody. He's trying to help somebody on the side of the road. The good news is, hey, you got that world record out of the deal, though. So he was thrown 118 feet. That Mm. is a long way. That is a long way. Yeah, because, like, I'm trying to think of something that would be 118 feet. Well, it would be the distance this guy got thrown by the car. So just imagine that. That's how far it was. (laughs) That didn't help, did it? All right, coming up, we've got some good news. <laughs> I love it when you just give me that look. <laughs> People listening to the radio don't understand the disgusting look. It's just like so disgusted with me with my stupid jokes. She's just like, <sighs> <laughs> coming up, we have some good news that is on the way. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio.
Always here to wrap this program up with some good news. And I think we got some here today. Heidi, you ready for some good news? I am ready. I'm always ready for I some good too. news. And, and again, I want to just say, uh, if you have some good news, you can share it with me. It's not always easy to find good news. So if you find some, share it on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash John and Heidi show. And when you go there, you can also see this story. Volunteers in Kansas City are working together to build tiny homes for homeless veterans. The goal is to build 50 houses at about 240 square feet each. Veterans are overly represented in the homeless population. That is really sad. And this group of volunteers is hoping that they can remedy that as best they can. They plan to finish building the homes by winter of this coming year. And you can see a video, and it's on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. And I think it's really sad that anybody would be homeless. But it is like an extra dose of sadness on top. Agreed. When it is when a veteran. it's our military. Yeah. And, and so many times it's because these are men and women who serve their country. And, you know, sometimes you know, I, I talked to a homeless veteran and I was asking, you know, and I was being very polite about it, but I was asking, how did you end up in this situation? And he had PTSD and mm-hmm. had some issues that he was unable to retain a job. He would get a job, but he had some issues there and it wouldn't it w- wasn't able to continue and and. and stay on and i just think that's really really sad Mm -hmm. when that happens yes it is again uh this is such a cool thing that they're doing this is in kansas city and their goal is to build 50 houses 240 square feet each so there you go we should chip in and build a house i think that's wonderful that would be awesome i'd love to help do that all right time to say goodbye heidi goodbye heidi goodbye everybody it's a monday we appreciate you tuning into the john and heidi show if you would like to submit a dear john letter We'll get to those at this same time on Thursdays. Actually, I guess not this time. It's earlier in the program. But we get to them on Thursdays. And you can submit your Dear John letter at Facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. Time now for a bonus break on the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Sunny Radio, where it's always in the 80s. Thank you so much for joining us today. We've got on the line right now an ophthalmologist because we're going to be talking about Eye Care America. It's a program that's kind of a cool program, and we have Dr. John Birdall from Vance Thompson Vision in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I appreciate you taking some time to chat with us. This is kind of a neat program, this Eye Care America. First of all, how long have you guys been a part of that program? Yeah, so our practice has been a part of it, you know, since its inception in, in 1985. But um, but I've only been in practice for seven years. But I but from uh, the moment I finished training, I've been involved with Eye Care America as a volunteer, and now I uh, am one of the team that helps lead it. That's nice. I see. It says you're the chair of the American Academy of Ophthalmology's Eye Care America. So that's a long title. You have a really big plaque that goes in front of you, don't you? <laughs> No, I'm really, I'm really on the team. I get more credit than a lot of other people do the work. No, this, this is a great program. Uh, we want to talk about the program so people can learn more about it. But it's uh, when you, when you think about your vision, you know that is a really important thing. There have been times when I've gotten something in my eye, you know, and I, and I had, to, you know, wasn't able to see very well out of that eye even just for a couple of hours, and it was, it was terrible. And I just sit and think, people who have limitations there. Uh, if there's a way to increase your uh, vision, if there's a way to make it better, uh, that is such a wonderful thing to do. And this Eye Care America program kind of helps people do that, doesn't it? Yeah. So let me underline that for you a little bit, John. There was a recent study out of Johns Hopkins that talked about people's health care fears. Yeah. Number one was losing vision. Number two was dementia. And number three was dying. Wow. And so... So, you know, people are really scared about losing, you know, their mind or losing their vision. And so you're you're exactly right. It's a, it's a scary thing. And one of the other important things is that as we get older and our bodies wear out more, more and more of our world comes to us through our eyes. You know, pictures of grandkids and watching TV and reading books as, as we're not able to, you know, the slopes anymore. Now, this I Care America program is all across the country, isn't it? That's correct. So it's uh, it's run through the American Academy of Ophthalmology, and um, the idea is to provide people that otherwise wouldn't or couldn't get access to eye care, especially seniors, the ability to do that, uh, even if they don't have the financial wherewithal to accomplish it on their own. And I see it's specifically designed for Americans 65 and older, and you know, this is this is a great thing for people 
that are getting into the years where even if they haven't needed glasses leading up to that, they certainly are probably getting to an age where they're starting to have some vision issues. So it's a great way for this program to kind of kick in to help people who need it the most. Yeah, that's right. And because, you know, we talked about our bodies wearing out. Well, well, our eyes can wear out, too. And there's real, really three biggies as, you know, you get over age 65. Uh, glaucoma, cataracts, and macular degeneration. And diabetic changes are, are uh, a good part of that, too. But diseases like glaucoma can start to rob your vision without you even knowing it because it steals your peripheral vision. And, and we don't recognize it, but the real challenge with a disease like glaucoma is once the damage is done, you can't undo it. And so, so glaucoma is all about prevention. So it's like if you have something that's on fire, even if you put out the fire, you still have fire damage. So once you've got that damage, it's going to be there. That's exactly right. Now, I've got a link, and I'm going to put this on our Facebook page to make it really easy. If you'd like to get some more information on Eye Care America, and it's at aao.org slash eyecare-america. And I know that's a long domain name, so I made it really simple. It's at facebook.com slash sunnyradio. But some other ways that Eye Care America can help, you guys have discount drugs available as well. How does that work? Yeah, there's a, a number of programs that um, Eye Care America has partnered with. And, you know, so, for example, with glaucoma, uh, one of the main phases of treatment is eye drops to lower your eye pressure. And they, they can be expensive. And so we partnered with, um, you know, groups that help provide discount cards to not only now folks can get care from the doctors that they need, and they can get the treatments that they need. That's awesome. That's a really good idea. And, and when it, you know, again, when it comes to your eye health, you want to make sure that you're checking on that from time to time. You don't say, well, I had an eye exam eight years ago. How often should you have your eyes checked? Yeah, over age of 65, you should have your eyes checked probably every year. So that, and that's, again, at, over the age of 65, maybe somebody that's in their 40s, uh, would, would they every year as well or every couple of years? or every, every couple of years probably, but you should definitely. So if you were born lucky and you don't need glasses and you haven't really gone in to get eye exams because your glasses broke or whatever, or if you had something like LASIK surgery in the past, you definitely should be getting a, an eye exam around the age of 40 just to make sure that none of these diseases are starting to creep up. And then if it looks good, you can probably stretch that out every few years. That's awesome. But at age 65, where the prevalence starts to get higher, you need to have exams on a more regular basis and probably yearly. Just make it make it uh, one of the things that you do on a regular basis and don't forget about it. That's right. And thank you for doing what you do. I can tell you it makes a huge difference when, when your eyesight, when you go from not being able to see well to being able to see better. And, and one of my favorite stories is our son. We didn't know that he had issues when he was a younger kid. You know, we had no reason to think that he did until he was in, I don't know, second grade, third grade, somewhere along there. The teacher noticed that, you know, he was not being, he wasn't able to see the things on the board very clearly. So we went and had uh, had his eyes checked and he got glasses and I remember walking outside with him when he put those glasses on and he was looking at the world literally for the first time in seeing the world the way it really looks. And, and he's, I, the thing that I remember him saying is, look at all the leaves on the trees. He had never noticed that before. They, before it was just kind of, you know, there was this green blur there, but he could see every leaf. And he said, wow, I've never noticed the leaves like that before. And that, you know, literally opening your eyes for the first time is such an amazing thing. And that's something that we take for granted. You know, think about how many times we just take for granted the fact that we can see. So thank you for doing what you're doing to help people have that gift and keep that gift of sight. Yeah, I I feel uh, privileged to be able to do that as my vocation, and I feel privileged to be able to do it as part of the Eye Care America team. Well, thank you again for taking time to chat with us. Again, folks, if you'd like more information on the Eye Care America program, I have a link at facebook.com slash sunny radio. And again, Dr. John Birdall is with Vance Thompson Clinic here in Sioux Falls. But maybe people listening in Sioux City or in other places, we have people that listen online all around the world. This program is available all over the place, not just here in Sioux Falls, correct? Yeah, that's right. So there's ophthalmologists um, you know, across the United States. And um, by going to uh, the website that you mentioned or um, icareamerica.org, There's an online application, and then the team takes it from there and finds a convenient doctor that participates close to you, and and it really is an easy process. So if you are a person that's saying, oh, I'm worried about my eyes, but I know I can't pay for it, I'm over 65, go there 
and and the team will help get you the care that you need. Very nice. And I have a link to both of those websites on our Facebook page once again, facebook.com slash sunnyradio.